This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Christy Wright, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today, as we take your questions about your life and your money. This is an exciting week around Ramsey. We are doing a whole bunch of things. I started off my weekend in Orange County in Anaheim, uh, speaking for Eastside Church, tens of thousands of folks attending their four campuses and five services. It was an absolute blast. Wonderful people. Thanks to Pastor Gene and Barbara for having us out there and taking the entire church through Financial Peace University. Um, Always fun to meet with people who are winning. We're meeting people who are just getting started. We're meeting people who are Baby Steps millionaires and uh, just getting to hang out with folks between services and sign stuff and take pictures and hear stories, and it's just enthralling. I love it. I love it. And for those of you that haven't been to California in a while, I was under the impression California is more shut down than it is. It was actually pretty open. Um, people were like normal and everything. <laughs> and uh, I kind of had the impression they weren't. So, uh, I mean, not. I mean, they're California normal. <laughs> what, as close they're, to normal as California is going to be. Their version of normal. Their version of normal. But, the, I, mean, the, I mean, I thought the whole place was masked up and they were all sitting in their houses or something. And I, I was wrong. They're, they're pretty much, we went to restaurants that you can't get in. It's busy and everybody's out doing life, which is good. I'm glad you guys are out doing life. I'm glad in spite of your governor that you're, that you're doing life. So big, big week around here continues. Tomorrow is launch day, street date uh, for our latest publishing endeavor. Christy Wright's brand new book that will be a number one called Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Balancing Your Life. And uh, you can balance. It's possible. Uh, but you have to understand what it really is. We're going to be talking about that a lot this week. Uh, you can get the book at RamseySolutions.com, including $50 worth of items only until midnight tonight, because tomorrow, once the book is on sale, it's $20 for the book. That simple. Today, you get $20 for the book and $50 worth of stuff, which includes the ebook, the audio book, access to the live event that Christy and I will be doing on Thursday night, which is another part of this big week. Uh, we've got uh, about 21 seats left here in our auditorium for the live in studio portion. And we're live streaming yes. the Take Back Your Time live event that Christy is doing. And I think I'm doing the intro or something like that. Yeah. Am anybody, I closing or am I doing the intro? You're doing the intro. Okay. And anybody that pre orders bef before midnight tonight gets a ticket to that so you can live stream it or if you're in Nashville come join us in Nashville we'll be doing a book signing for those people that are the in-studio audience it's a launch party I'm speaking you're speaking so it'll be a lot of fun and if you're if you're uh waiting on the audiobook I've had a lot of people tell me Dave they're waiting on the audiobook I'm like pre-order now you get the audiobook free and you'll get a hardback copy of the book so uh you get the ebook audiobook and a ticket to Thursday night's event if yeah, you pre-order today you'll be able to download all that within 24 hours yes Yes. In less than 24 hours now. That's and right. the book will ship out tomorrow or right. today. it may ship out today. Yeah. Because we just don't want you to have it before launch day. That's all. Because we told the bookstores not to put it out until then. So it's a, bi it's a big launch day for Take Back Your Time. And here's the thing. We live in a culture. We were actually talking about this this morning. The Great Resignation. Ken mm -hmm. Coleman's dealing with that a lot. Yep. With a number of people that have had an ex existential experience where they kind of stopped and went, wait a minute. This pandemic thing made me realize I may not get out of this whole thing alive. And so maybe I ought to work on crap that's important to me rather than just work. Yeah. And so people are resigning. 2.7% of Americans resigned their job last month. Wow. That's 36% of Americans, if, that, if you annualize that, yeah. in one year will that's turn insane. over. That's the, a record. Nothing like that has ever been seen in, in modern times yeah. in America. And, and so, but what that tells us is, is that we're pulled at 62 directions and we're not always working on what we think is important. Yeah. And something like a pandemic has to say, whoa, right. What's important? Well, it makes you rethink your life. You know, sometimes I think that we wake up, we pour our cup of coffee, and we just run so hard. And we don't stop to think, am I filling my calendar, my to-do list? 
with anything worth doing or am I just reacting to everyone pulling at me? And the, the truth is most of us are running so hard and so fast reacting. And so there's, there is something about the pandemic, but there's also something about the, the heart behind this book of going, Hey, you get one life. How you spend your time is how you spend your life. So I want to help you figure out what's important to you and actually do that because it turns out when you do what matters to you, that's what makes you feel balanced at the end of the day anyway. And so it's really bringing a new take on this balance equation and getting to the root issue of what's going on, which I believe is what's really going to help people. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, old football coach friend of mine, he always, says, he always quotes James. He says, you're just here for a vapor. Yeah. <laughs> you're just here for a vapor. You're just going to be here for a second. So you better you better make you better make the most of that dash. That yeah. Between the date you were born and the date is over, you better make the most of that dash. Take back your time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what did you do with it? Did you do it on purpose? And um, as Sharon and I, over the years, as we've grown this business and had all these different uh uh, things pulling at us, th- yeah. things that quote unquote needed us. And right. um, uh, Sharon's always re- saying, well, you're not the Messiah. That's his job. You, you don't <laughs> have to be everywhere. Uh, that's God's job. He, you can't be God. You're not Jesus. Just stay home. It's okay. And um, and yet you, you want to get things done. You want to accomplish stuff. You want to step into things that have meaning. But uh, we've had to learn at our house to control our calendar uh, with almost more intensity than we do our budget. Yeah, well, well, there's a finite aspect to your time that you don't have with money. You can earn more money. You can't get more time. We all get the same 24 hours in a day. So it is the most finite resource that we have. So how we manage it becomes a major factor in our ability to be successful, reach our goals, and just live our lives like we want to. And I think one of the interesting things, Dave, you know, our, our uh, email team here, our research team, marketing teams, they're all into SEO, search engine optimization, they know some of the top search terms. And the top search terms are productivity, efficiency, you know, multitasking. And I'm going, man, we think the solution is just to work harder, work smarter, multitask, have the right app, have the right morning routine, and just do more. And it turns out we can do all that and just end up exhausted. So I want to help you actually get out of the rat race of just thinking that doing more is going to solve your balance problem because it's not. I want to help you figure out what matters to you and do that. And it turns out that's what leads to that feeling you've been wanting. But it's a different path than most of us are pursuing every day, to be honest. So get all the free stuff. Do it before midnight tonight. Um, that sounds like an infomercial or something, but it is. I mean, we shut it off at midnight because tomorrow is officially the launch day. So the book is Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance. It's $20. It includes the live stream event. Or if you want to be in studio, you can do that for the event this coming Thursday night for Christy and I. Uh, we're looking forward to that. All you got to do is just go to Dave Ram- or to go to RamseySolutions.com, and you can pre-order the book, and you can sign up for anything you want to do if you put slides time after it it'll bring up the uh the live stream event yeah. and you can register for the live stream event but you, there's no need to pay for that just get the book and the live stream is free and the ebook is free and the audiobook is free if you do it right now this is your we've been telling you for months weeks whatever do it right now now <laughs> ramseysolutions.com paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless.
Ramsey Wright, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author and author of the brand new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance, is my co-host today. Justin is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, Justin, what's up in your world? Hey, Dave, how are you? Great, man. How are you? <clears throat> doing well, doing well. Um, I just had a quick question. I started working a uh, second job about five or six weeks ago just to take care of some bills and just kind of... Um, lower our monthly dues as you would um i currently owe fifteen thousand on my truck eighteen thousand on my wife's car and uh roughly a hundred thousand on the house um i'm bringing home anywhere from seven hundred to eleven hundred dollars a week extra and every friday for the past five weeks i've been paying that directly to my truck on top of the monthly payment that i normally make am i making the right move here yep you're doing great. What are your side hustles? Uh, it's my old welding, welding gig. It's uh, right around the corner from my house, and uh, they just stay super busy, so I can just kind of roll in there when I want and uh, help them, and they help me just as much. Yeah. yeah. You're doing awesome. That's amazing. So all, all just your you. welding is, is that profitable. That's awesome, man. That's an extra 50 grand a year. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Nice side hustle, you know. Uh, uh so the big thing here is not only do you want to throw the side hustle money on there, you want to be doing a budget that includes everything coming in, side hustle money and all your money, both of you are making, and then you spend okay. all of that money on paper with your every dollar app, it's free to use, and you give every dollar an assignment and any dollars that are left over above $1,000 saved for baby step one are going to your smallest debt, which is your truck. And so, yes, you're correct, correct to throw this money, but I'm challenging you. There may be some even more money in your budget when you start living on a written game plan that you and your wife are agreeing to. You'll feel like you got a raise. You may find some more dollars there. The other thing, Justin, keep in mind is that when we talk about becoming be debt free in baby step two, we're talking about all debt except for the house. That's a different baby step. And so you're doing great. Just tackle those cars in baby step two like you are one at a time with your uh, side hustle money and any extra money that you can squeeze out of the budget from your full-time job and you'll be debt-free soon you're doing great making all that extra income so well done yeah i mean if you're making you're going to be there in six months yeah you got thirty-three thousand bucks left on these cars you're going to be done pretty quick and then you go and finish your emergency fund at three to six months of expenses baby step three four as you start saving 15 percent towards retirement and we start to work our way towards baby step millionaire is that next move then kayla is with us in indianapolis hi kayla how are you Hi, Dave and Christy. How are you guys? Great. What's going on? Um, so I'm currently pregnant. I'm due uh, November 10th with my second son. And this time around, I'm doing things a little differently. I'm doing things the Dave way. So we're about ready to start um, baby step one. And it really makes me nervous to only have a thousand dollars once he's here. So I was wondering if we could stay in short mode for, say, six months. Um, just to get enough for once he's here and make sure everything's okay. And then we jump into baby step two. I know that the $1,000 is supposed to push you and give you that momentum, but it just really makes me nervous only having $1,000 with a newborn. Well, to start out with, um, the uh, we tell you not to do a, in, not to do pay money on debt while you're pregnant. So just pile right. cash yeah, we have it. as big we as have you it can perfect. pile until November 10th. But now you've right. had a baby. This is your second yeah. one. This is not a mystery. <laughs> Which is exactly why I'm asking this question. I well, I mean, I mean, what did you have? That how did your life financially turn upside down in the first six months? They just eat formula and diapers. <laughs> <laughs> True, but I didn't have a very supportive partner. We're no longer together, and he actually doesn't even help with with my son. So that's not the case with my husband. But I'm saying I know what can happen, and I, like if something happened with my well, car, what can happen? If something happened with my car, your car, my, babies break with, cars. With no, they don't. But if I needed that money for him, I'm just I'm just not sure if a thousand dollars is sitting on a thousand dollars. You don't need me. that money for him. You needed it for the car a minute ago. <laughs> 
Kayla, let me, let me jump in here. Let me jump in here. Let me, <laughs> Kayla. So the, the, the mindset typically when we talk about saving up while you're pregnant is the idea is to get the baby safely here. When your baby is safely here, which is what we would pray for and hope for for you, you've done this before. That's the idea. Then once the baby's here and you've adjusted and you give yourself a minute, then yes, you can go back to paying off debt because things are different now. Now, what I hear in your question, and maybe I'm reading into it, but what I hear in your question is, Kayla, you've, you've got some wounds from how this went last time. You didn't have a supportive partner last time. You had to do things on your own. That was scary. And that, that fear is still with you. And I hear you. But what we encourage people to do is we want you to make decisions based on facts, not on fear. Right now, sounds like you're in a great situation. You've got some money saved up. You're going to keep saving it up. When the baby is here safely, you can begin to pay on that debt again, and you will be bringing this baby home with a supportive spouse in a different situation. So I just want to encourage you, yes, that fear taught you something, but we don't have to live in that fear and worry because there's no amount of money that's going to relieve that fear. That's, that seems like that's that past wound talking to me. And the idea is we want to get that baby here. When you get the baby here safely, you can start to pay on that debt again. Once baby's here and safe, in your situation, hon, the reason I'm poking at you is 99% of your world is predictable. It is it is formula diapers and pediatrician bills, and they become part of the budget, and you don't need an emergency fund for those things. And there's not there's no boogie monster in the closet. There's just not. Um, Does maternity leave factor into that at all? Unpaid maternity leave? That's another reason well, I that guess I you're going to have to put that in your budget, right? Okay. I mean, if, if you guys, can, can you live on his income? Um, yeah, I believe so. It would be very tight. Right now we make around 90000 both of us. What does home. he make? Uh, he makes, that's the take home for both of us. He makes 85 Okay. On his own, and that's not take And you home. make take five? Home, five? Take home, it's about 5000 a month for him. For me, it's almost 4000 a month. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, oh, I thought you said he made 85000 a year. He does. That's, that's not take home, though. His take home is, is about five, so honey, it's forty three. Yeah. You can live on eighty five thousand dollars a year with two babies. You can do it. Why do you feel like you can't, Kayla? Do you have too much house or she something? She doesn't have a budget. Is why she doesn't. So you're you're dealing with all these emotional stuff, and you're dealing with no facts at all. And you're dealing with the past wounds that Christy's talking about, and you've got this vague thing in your head. You just told me your husband makes eighty five thousand dollars a year. And you have two kids. If you miss out a little bit of income while, you have, while you're out on maternity leave, zippy. Tighten up the old belt and stay out of the restaurants. You can do this. That's very, very, very doable. Okay. Um, so, yeah, don't add pregnancy drama to this discussion. It's just all you got to do is lay out these numbers and, and walk it straight through. This is very doable. Christy's done it. Rachel's done it. You've done it. You can do it. And the $1,000 is not a problem, not a problem at all. Open phones at 888 5225 Christy Wright is my co-host today. Thank you for jumping in. It is a free call. And so here's the thing. When you're having a baby or you've got some kind of known uh, big event yeah. that's a, that, that could be financially negative. Mm -hmm. Having a baby is not negative. But I was going to say negative big event, but it's <laughs> financial. It can be. We tell you to stop right. your baby steps. Push pause. Right. And then push play. And, and when the baby comes and comes home and take any money above 1000 and throw it at your debt snowball. And the reason we do that is you do have a predictable set of circumstances yeah, then. Right. And it could be that you're out on maternity leave and the predictable set of circumstances is we have to live on the 85. Yeah. But that is a not, not an unreasonable thing. And in no way are we putting your family at risk yeah. with a thousand dollar balance. There. You make a good point. The unknown is what is scary to people. If you have a budget and you can see how you can make it work, it's not scary anymore because you can see on paper. That's why we tell you guys to do a written budget and every dollar budget. When you see it, you can do it. It takes the fear of the unknown out of it. This is The Ramsey Show.
the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Adam and Alyssa are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, we're doing great. Welcome. Great. Where do you guys live? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Very cool. Welcome to Nashville and here to do a debt-free scream. How much have you paid off? Uh, we paid off 460000 Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. How long did this take? Nine years. Okay. And your range of income during that time? We started off at 80 between mm-hmm. the two of us, and this past year we were at 275. Wow. Oh, nice. big jump. What do you guys do for a yeah. living? I'm now a director of operations for a cancer center mm-hmm. in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And I work in oil and gas pipelines. Okay. And you guys are in Grand Rapids. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Awesome. Very cool. So I'm guessing with these numbers, you paid off your house. Yes. Yeah. Woo! Way to go, guys. Look at weird people. <laughs> Debt free completely. I love it. Very cool. What's this house worth? Now it's worth about four hundred thousand. Okay, mm-hmm. phenomenal. So four sixty includes the house and some other stuff. Then it does. He had student loans when we first got married almost ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a car that mm-hmm. we bought with a loan, which mm-hmm. we won't do again, but we paid that off. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to school. I have one and a half. Got one and a half masters completed, okay. but all right. So a variety of things. All right, cool. So how much of the four sixty was the house? Um, 90%. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. 290. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 300 of yep. it or 400. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or, so, wow. Way to go, guys. That's awesome. So what Thanks. happened? What happened nine years ago that got you guys on this kick to not only pay off the student loans, the other debt, but all of it? We got married. Um, okay. And I had paid off my student loans. I had a house. He had a house. And we just we're trying to figure out how to make it work together. What do we do for a budget? Mm-hmm. Are we going to save? We wanted kids. I actually got pregnant a month after we got married. So, oh, wow. Yeah, it was something. Mm-hmm. Wow. Very and we cool. just, yeah, we were looking for a plan and kind of fell into this. It was simple for us to think about. Mm-hmm. We could do it. Um, but we changed jobs a lot. We, he got me into management and healthcare, which has just kind of made my career take off. Mm-hmm. And I got laid off uh, or fired three times Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. due to the downturn. Okay. And then uh, someone asked me to come back, and then it's just been work, work, work (laughs) without getting divorced. Yeah. (laughs) How'd you get connected with us on the plan, for the plan? My old boss from out of college would listen to you guys, and it made sense. He had money. So um, as Dave said, you listen to people who have money, not those that don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just kind of started following it, just a really small shuffle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also like the biblical basis, I think, too. You know, we try to teach our kids why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. And to us, that was really important to have something that wasn't just to get more money, but there's, you know, a philosophy behind it that means more. So that was important to us, too. Yeah. How does it feel to have a paid for everything? House and everything. (sighs) So awesome. (laughs) Really good. Just awesome. Free. Yeah. Free. Different, mm-hmm. different level of weight around your shoulders, huh? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. What do you tell people the secret to getting out of debt is? Nine years you've been working on this. Ooh. Communication. <laughs> Hard work and communication. Get a bigger shovel and have a spouse <laughs> that supports you when yeah. you're traveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you've been gone a lot, huh? Uh, last year was 90 days in a hotel. Whoa. Wow. And then this year's um, 27 so far. Wow. Wow. That's enough. Good, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people who uh, think traveling is glamorous don't do it. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We are for this trip. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah, this one you need to glamour it up a little. Yeah. Yeah. This is not this is not pipeline trip here. This is a celebration trip. Right. I like it. That's Good. awesome. What kept y'all motivated? This is a long haul. Nine years in the mm-hmm. house. Like that's that's even more than a marathon. Like this is ultra marathon. What kept you yeah. motivated? I think our commitment, I mean, we have a book every year that we write down what our goals are and where we want to be, and we have four kids now. Wow. And so that's that's my motivation is to be stable, show them how to do it right, mm-hmm. um, how to stick to a commitment. What's that's the age range? One to eight. Oh, okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Good for you guys. Yeah. Well, this is fabulous, you guys. Yeah. We're so proud of you. Very, very well done, heroes. Four kids and a paid-off house and everything, all in just 10 years. You've been getting after it. Nine years, for that matter. Yeah, well, well done. Very cool. 
And uh, well, we appreciate you coming down here and celebrating with us. Hope you have a great time here in Nashville. We got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. That is the next chapter in your story for sure to be Everyday Millionaires. Wait a minute. Are you already? We're like forty thousand dollars away. <laughs> there 40, you are, you're there. Round up. Okay. Round up. That okay. counts. Yeah. Okay. So with a paid for four hundred thousand dollar house and then six hundred thousand in nest egg. Yeah. Yes. Give or take. Mm-hmm. And you're there. And, and how old are you? He's turning 40 on Saturday. All right. Awesome. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Not a bad birthday present, millionaire. <laughs> That's awesome. Woo! Stock market just needs to go up a little between now and Friday. You'll right. be there, right? <laughs> yes. I like it. This is great. Way to go, you guys. That's Thank awesome. You. I'm so proud of you. Well, we're seeing a lot of that these days, and uh, especially when they come in to do their paid-off house yep. as a part of the debt-free screen. Uh, that sets you up to be here. So very, very well done. <laughs> I love it. Well, we got a copy of Legacy Journey for you because that's been your motivation. Change your legacy, and you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll enjoy that book. And, of course, Total Money Makeover for you to give to someone else. And maybe you're the old guy with money now that some young guys listening to at work watching you. You hand them (laughs) off that Total Money Makeover, and we'll get them going. And 10 years later, I'll have them in here, right? So so. very good stuff. I love it. All right, Adam and Alyssa, Grand Rapids, Michigan, house and everything. Baby Steps Millionaires, 460000 paid off in nine years, making eighty to two seventy-five. dollars Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. debt-free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how it's done. That is so cool. The house, man, it gets me every time. And we are getting that more and more. You and I have talked about this. This is... 30 years of you teaching this stuff yeah. and it started, you're starting to see people, you know, baby steps, kids and baby steps, millionaires and people paying off the house. It's becoming more and more normal for people to be completely debt free, which is pretty incredible. Well, let's inject our typical numbers on other situation. We didn't ask them about it, but it won't be far off. Nine years, mm-hmm. 460 mm-hmm. of that, um, a little over 300 was the house. And so let's say it took them three years of the nine to get the other stuff done, mm-hmm. baby steps one through three, debt free, have an emergency fund in place, and maybe two years, somewhere yep. in there. And then they've got six to seven years, they get the house paid off, it, which is about typical also right. uh, of people following the total money makeover baby steps, doing Financial Peace University, doing this kind of stuff. They knock it out in about seven years, and you're sitting there with a half million dollar house. And this is very typically what we find during that time. From baby steps four, five, and six, you're putting 15% of your income away. Right. Do that for seven years with matches and Roths and good mutual funds and good rates of return. Uh, and they're making really good money. Their incomes are increasing during this time. 15% of that while paying extra on the house gets you to a nest egg, six, seven hundred thousand. With a paid for house of 400000 those two things added together with 100% debt free equals $1 million or greater net worth. You are a Baby Steps millionaire. Yeah. This is how it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I wonder how many people, too, are right at that Baby Steps millionaire mark and they may not even realize it because their situation has changed just in the last three years, even, whether it's from their investments, their retirement, their uh, home value going up. Value of up, the home. Yeah, that'll going get you. Up, they may put them over the line and they don't even realize it. And so it's just incredible how quickly that can change when you follow the Baby Steps. Well, the number of people that aren't actually focusing on the number, mm-hmm. instead, they're just focusing on, focusing on doing the work. The principle, yeah. And then they look up and go, oh, we did it. It worked, yeah. We're there. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. And it just it, it sneaks up on you. The number of times I hear that as well is it's pretty typical. Yeah. Uh, again, for, for a Baby Steps millionaire. And we're finding these folks everywhere. And we've known they were there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and they kind of did portions of the plan on their own. But now, after almost 30 years of being on the air, we've they followed us we followed them all the way through to where now we've got this affinity with this particular group that's pretty incredible and uh they're everywhere and they're proof that you can do it that's That's the point that's exactly right if you're listening you're watching you can do this you could be 22 and be 32 and have gotten there that could happen wow how wicked weird is that that's like becoming wealthy and stuff and stuff. This is The Ramsey Show.
Christy Wright Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Evanston, Wyoming, Shelly is calling. Hi, Shelly. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? And I, My husband and I just finished Baby Step 3 on Saturday. Yay! Congratulations. We are so excited. Thank you. <laughs> but we have a question about Baby Step 4. We don't have children at home, so we're not... Baby Step 5 isn't relevant for us, but my husband has a very generous pension plan. Um, He makes about $112,000 a year in retirement, and so we're trying to figure out if it's reasonable for us to not worry about that for. We don't have earned income, so we can't do an IRA or anything like that. We'd need to do a mutual fund. Should we just skip over to six and and focus on paying off our house. How old are you guys? <laughs> He's 57 and I'm 54. Why do you have no earned income? Um, <laughs> he said, you know he's going to ask me that. <laughs> and I, our, our reason is when he retired three years ago, we bought a foreclosed townhouse and we're spending our time remodeling it to build up some equity. He retired from the military. And so we didn't have any kind of equity or anything like that. So we brought this townhouse and we're remodeling it. It was in really, really rough shape. So we're doing a lot of work on it and focusing on that. And and cool. When, when, will, when, will, th- when will that be done? <laughs> Hopefully by the end of 2022, we'll have everything that we want finished, finished. And we've been cash flowing all that along the way. Yeah. And what, what do you owe on the property? We owe 99. Okay. All right. Um, and we have probably it, about, okay. I don't know, maybe $15,000 worth of work. We still want to he do He takes survivorship on his military pension? Yes. Okay. So it goes from 112 to 80 when he dies? Right. Okay. Um, that's what scares me is that uh, something happens to him. Before you guys execute your plan. Right. And you're living on his survivorship pension until you go get a career. And you've still got a hundred and you've still got debt on the house and you've still got absolutely no money other than an income. Right. And that just scares me. I just, it doesn't feel like a solid plan. (laughs) Okay. So I want you to start building up a nest egg. I appreciate his service and I appreciate he's got a great military retirement plan he obviously was an officer or something or way up there anyway and yeah, an uh, officer for a lot of years yeah, yes and appreciate his service and um but uh and, and he worked so hard for that pension that i'm a little bit afraid he's leaning on it too hard okay in this plan and and i don't want it to leave you vulnerable i'm really not worried about him <laughs> i know we talked about that he'll be fine without me <laughs> I, <laughs> well, we're talking about monetarily speaking, honey. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's the this is the way we plan all the estate planning around my house is apparently I'm going to die first, which makes me rather worried. Sharon has this planned thoroughly. <laughs> but um but yeah, so that that's the thing. Um you know, I, I just I want you guys to have some money. And so uh okay. if you delay a little bit and knock out this rehab and then you start some kind of income to where you can do a couple of Roth IRAs and at least you start dumping, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand bucks a year over there, uh at least get something going because I'd like for you to have a couple of hundred grand or five hundred grand in a paid for house before one of you passes away. Right. Okay. We do have about 180 in a thrift savings. Oh, I missed that. Um, sorry, I didn't know I didn't that. that. We do have well, that. Does, that gives me a lot more comfort. Then, if you want to okay. finish the rehab, you know, if you want to tear into it, that you could do that, I guess. But the, the downside of not following the baby steps here is you're not building that nest egg, which is your comfort. Right. So you've got that 180. The good news is that in seven years, you know, by the time you're in your early 60s, if you don't do anything with that 180, it's going to be 360. If you've got right. it invested in, like I tell you to, in the thrift, in the C plan, the S and the I. And so, uh, but, uh, yeah, so you have 400 grand by the time you're 60 um, and 61. And, <clears throat> you know, you'll, you'll be okay doing this. But the, the downside is I don't, I don't want you to, 
extrapolate this too far. Let's get that rehab done and then then start investing because I, I worry about I, I always want you to have more money than just the pension. Having that nest egg gives you a lot of peace. Yeah, more, have more options and well done on uh, cash flow and the renovation. So that's a that's a good step in the journey. Jake is in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Jake. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Great. What's up? So I'm 22. Just graduated college in May. I have a pretty good job as a project engineer. Um, pretty much as soon as I graduated college, I needed a new car. Um, went out. A brand new car. Um, my dad's in the car business. Um, we kind of talked about it, given everything that's going on. Buying a, a newer used car um, didn't make a ton of sense. Um, I drive a long ways to work. I'm still living with my parents. Um, I intend to live with them for probably about a year, um, if at all possible. I kind of never want to have to get an apartment. Um, but you know, with living at home with my parents, I drive a long ways to work. I'm driving into Atlanta every day. Um, what, what's I a long way? Um, takes me about an hour. Um, I'm putting probably 70 miles round trip every day on my car. Yeah. And what did you buy? Um, Toyota Tacoma. Okay. So what, 30 grand? Uh, it was 40, but my loan is about 26. Okay. And, and, and um, I have no student debt. Um, so and, that was kind of, and how is it you want us to, to help you? Well, my question was with, you know, I've already put, I've had the truck for about um, a little less than three months. I already have 7,000 miles on it. Um, you know, putting those kind of miles on a truck, um, you know, my main concern is that, you know, given the length of the loan that I have, um, that, you know, I'm going to get caught in a cycle where, um, you know, I'm putting, uh, I'm going to need to buy a new truck before I pay off the loan, that sort of thing. Um, so I talked to my dad and we talked about potentially, you um, doing something where I trade my truck in every year and just do a new one. Um, but then, you know, at that point, I'm in a cycle where I'm always having a car payment. I never have a car paid off, and I'm always losing a little bit of money. And your question is? <laughs> well, my question is mainly, uh, you know, what do you recommend for somebody who's in their, you know, early 20s just out of college? Um, you know, do you think it's a absolutely terrible idea to keep my truck or should I, you know, go into something that's not quite as reliable, but, you know, I don't have that debt, better off, you know, putting my money somewhere else. I, I perceive from the way you're asking this question and some of the statements that you've made that you don't listen to this show very often or much. No, I, I do listen to occasionally. Um, I definitely know your standpoint on, uh, buying a new car. Okay. Um, and and debt, Jake, and debt, debt. You know his stance on debt, our our stance, yeah. everybody's yeah. okay. Okay. How much money do you make? Out of curiosity. Sixty thousand. We we couldn't hear you. You're breaking up. How much? Sixty. Did you say sixty thousand? I did. Okay. All right. Let me give you a formula that will one hundred percent ensure you are a broke butt thirty five year old. Okay. Follow the plan right. that you are on. Buy new cars and keep buying them and trading them in and running up miles on them. And you will be a broke butt 30 year old that has supported your father's company beautifully. And you will be broke. Some of the most broke 35 year olds I meet have continually traded for new cars over and over and over and over again in the first decade of their working life. And they started out with this idiotic idea that because they graduated from college, they deserved to be $30,000 in debt on a freaking truck. So, no, I, I'm afraid your dad's not going to like Dave Ramsey uh, because I don't like his advice for his son at all. Um, I would tell you to sell the truck, get you a cheaper truck, move out of your parents' house into a rental close to work and save your money and quit investing in things that go down in value like a rock and then scratch your head and wonder why you're broke that's where chevy got that like a rock <laughs> this is the ramsey show dave here we just launched a brand new listener survey we want to know what you think about the show you'll be entered to win a 100 dollars amazon gift card no purchase necessary take the survey at ramseysolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789 
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Christy Wright, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225 as we take your questions about your life and your money. Big week here at Ramsey. We are launching Christy's book tomorrow official street date for the book it will ship out it's already shipped out and it should be at some of your homes and in all of your bookstores by tomorrow take back your time the guilt-free guide to life balance so the book is on pre-sale through midnight tonight and that includes a live stream that she and i will be doing this thursday evening all about life balance. Yeah, and you're going to get the ebook and the audiobook free if you go ahead and get your copy today, in addition to the hardback book that we will mail you. Uh, but we're really excited, Dave, and it's been fun to see the reviews coming in because we sent it out to our early readers, people that pre ordered by September 1st, got the ebook. And um, it's been very interesting to see there's a common theme in what people are saying. They say this is not just another time management book. No, it's this not. is not just an, and I'm like, exactly. And that's, that's my heart behind it. And my hope for this space. I love the tagline, the guilt-free guide to life balance, man, people walk around all day, every day, feeling like they're failing, feeling like they never have enough time. They're, they're not good enough. They can't do everything they want to do. And, and I really try to dig into the issues below the issues so that we can solve it there. It's not I say all the time, it's not just about the calendar. It's about enjoying the life that the calendar represents. So we're going to we're gonna solve this at the root issue, and it's been good to see how that's connecting with people. Uh, it, it is good to get your work done. Yeah. And it is good to be noble and diligent and dutiful and honorable with your calendar. But then we take that too far to where then all of those positive character traits that I just outlined – can turn into a a guilt trip. They can turn into, I, sp- I have now spent the last decade of my life, you look back if you're not careful and you say stuff like, I've spent the last decade of my life doing what other people wanted me to do. Yeah. And now I'm going to do something for me. We call that a midlife crisis yeah. because you finally catch <laughs> up and you go, screw this. I am not living like this anymore. This is cray cray. And you just blow up. Yeah. Instead of just, instead of, incrementally making the adjustments i'm convinced that a whole lot the one of the most powerful thing in your book it's actually a boundaries book mm. yeah there's it's a, a book on how to set boundaries a book on how to say no yeah there's so a, that you can say yes to the right stuff right? yeah there's there's a piece on that too where when we talk about boundaries in step four I, I break it down into five practical actionable steps for creating balance in your life depending on what that looks like for you but step four is all about that about boundaries but it's interesting because we need to protect our time and our calendar from the outside world And all the pushy people that will tell us, you know, what we need to be doing. But we also need to put those things in place to protect us from ourselves, from reacting and the guilt trips and, oh, I need to be the hero and I feel the need to say yes to everything and people pleasing. So so boundaries work both ways when we look at it. But I'll tell you, there's two pieces of this. Um, There's two pieces to this book that I think have hit a nerve that are different than what I've seen out there on time management. One is the idea of seasons and how when I talk about what doing the right things, it's at the right time. So in the season you're in, for example, everyone listening to this show is probably familiar with the baby steps. If you're in baby step two, then your number one priority, financially at least, is to get out of debt, get out of debt, get out of debt. And so when you're taking two and three jobs to get a bigger shovel, that's what's right right now. It doesn't mean you're going to do that forever. This is what's right in this season. And so I don't want to be a workaholic. (laughs) I doubt that's going to be your problem. (laughs) But it gives permit. It gives people permission to do the right things at the right time to say, hey, what's what's priority for us, either financially or with our calendar, is this thing right here. It could be a busy season at work. I'm in a really busy season right now at work. And that's what's right right now. And so there's an aspect of seasons. The other piece of it, and, and Dave, you and I have talked about this. Um, I don't think we talk enough about um, how being present affects our ability to feel balanced because it doesn't matter if you create the most perfect schedule in the world. If you're not present for it, you miss it. So if you're spending all of your days at work thinking about your kids and then you go home with your kids and you're thinking about work, 
Well, of course, you always feel guilty because you're always focused on where you're not. I'll tell you the worst one I ever did. Okay. And I did. I caught myself doing this the third time, and I never did it again. Okay. Planning the next vacation while what? on <laughs> vacation. <laughs> yes. This is so fun. Let's do That's it That's not being present. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting on my laptop planning the next vacation <laughs> from my vacation. That's just dumber than a rock. <laughs> I've done that. For you sure. just got so excited about that vacation. You're like, let's do this again. Let's, yeah, well, that that could be what caused it. But yeah, yeah. Let, 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 find another place. Yeah, it feels like this. But uh, yeah, but I'm I'm you know I got time on my hands. I plan the next thing. It's that's the way my brain works. And yeah, but that's just that's not being present. Well, it's interesting because I think we are so used to input, and we have this from our phone. We have a device in our pocket that screams our name 24 hours a day, but we're so used to this input. We're constantly having input in our brains. We don't know how to be still. We don't know how to be silent. We don't know how to walk in an elevator and just stare at the doors. Everybody reaches for their phone. And so just there's an aspect of this of learning how to be present in the moment that you're in, even if what you're doing is mundane. You know, it's fascinating, Dave. Research from Harvard shows that the more present you are, research shows it has a direct correlation and causation with happiness. You're actually happier when you're present in the moment. So I want to help people be where your feet are. Even if are. it's a negative moment. Even if it's a negative moment. Isn't that fascinating, though? That is. Where you're, when you bring your mind back to your body, even if what you're doing is mundane, research shows you're happier. It turns out our mind was designed to be in our body and doing what our body is doing. And so, gosh, in our world, when you're scrolling social media and your mind is wandering 100 miles an hour, that's a gift to bring it back to the present and actually enjoy a moment you're in while you're in it. What a concept. It's a hard thing to do in the world we live in. Well, because we've got this power to uh, teleport ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think back, if if you went back um, 100 years, 200 years, and you took your phone with you, and it would do then Mm -hmm. what it does now, Mm -hmm. people would think that you were like a sorcerer. Yeah. I mean, it's like a little magic wand thing. <laughs> you could just touch a button and stuff would be delivered to your front porch and stuff, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, people, you could, you can, th- and people would talk on it. And yeah. it's, oh my, can you imagine? You'd be, you'd be burned at the stake for being a witch. <laughs> you know, sure, yeah. I mean, you, golly, you think about it because it's magic. It's, I heard one guy say it's like, it's like having magic and you have to be careful with magic. Yeah. It's uh, it, it, it can become a spiritual problem. And I think it has, screens have become that for a lot of people. Well, and I don't, I don't hate phones or, or I don't technology hate or so, social media. Dangerous. Yeah. It, it, but people could put it in that category like, oh, you just, no, it's not that. But I think that if we're going to live in a world where you have a device in your pocket screaming your name 24 hours a day, and there's fascinating research I actually cite in the book on the psychology of screens, notifications, everything about how we interact with our phone. If we're going to have that, we're going to have to have a plan to be able to actually enjoy our life. If not, we're going to spend our whole life knowing what everyone else is doing and completely miss our own. And I want to help people take their time back and take their attention back and actually enjoy their own life. The book is Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance. Today is the last day that you can buy it on pre-sale, which includes our live stream event this coming Thursday night, the ebook and the audio book, all at RamseySolutions.com. Be sure you hit up the website today and get the deal. That's how it works. This is The Ramsey Show. Life is full of firsts. and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. personality is my co-host at 888-825-5225. Kelsey is in Seattle, Washington. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? 
Hi, Dave. Hi, Christy. I'm great. How are you? Great. Better than we deserve. How can we help? Um, unrelated to my question, I hope to be there in about 12 months to do my debt free stream. So Yay! Awesome. fingers crossed for that. <laughs> I did something crazy and moved back home with my parents. So I'll be, I'll be ready to go to Nashville in a year. Cool. <laughs> Um, so I have a question about long-term insurance. You had a call recently from a gentleman in Washington State as well, and I know you're not super familiar with the new long-term care tax for Washington State, um, but I'm 36 years old, single, no children. Um, there's a deadline for me to purchase alternative long-term care before this goes into effect next year. So I'm not familiar with life insurance or long-term care. Um, I went on Xander's website. It says that they don't have anything available due to insurance companies in my state withdrawing their products until November. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of stuck. Yeah. Uh, okay. I. Um, it's not life insurance. You don't want anything to do with life insurance on this subject. That's a completely different subject. Okay. Do not put them together. Okay, because okay. bundling long-term care and life insurance together is what some of the industry is doing, and it is, it's a really crummy, horribly priced product. So stay away from that stuff. What you need to do is get the minimum method, the cheapest possible method for you to check this box. So it comes down okay. to is the tax going to be cheaper or buying a cheap policy going to be cheaper? And I suspect since the entire freaking state is facing this, communist movement in your state um that uh that that somebody is bringing a capitalistic uh solution to the table to uh provide some kind of inexpensive long-term care some cheap butt policy that does a horrible job but doesn't cost much and it costs less than the tax because you're 36 and you don't even need it right and that's um, that's what i'm so it guessing like it's gonna yeah it's gonna be 0.58 percent payroll tax but the benefit is only up to 36,500. I don't care which, what the benefit uh, is. You're 36 years like old. like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what the benefit yeah. is. You're 36 year old. The chances of you using this before 60 are less than 2%. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's not relevant. It's a dumb butt law by communists. I mean, it really is. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I hope I'm being real yeah, clear to you people in, in the government <laughs> and Washington State how much how lowly I think of you. But um yeah. the uh but anyway, the uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's ridiculous. So anyway, what you've got to do is figure out what's the least expensive thing. Now is the point what do you make a year? Uh seventy five thousand. And it's uh half of a percent, so it's three hundred and fifty bucks a year is the mm -hmm. tax. Right. I calculated like four thirty five ish. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Four hundred four hundred bucks a year. I doubt you can buy a mm -hmm. policy that cheap. You're probably just paying the tax. But I'll give you what a way if to I'm shop not it. Able to, to get out of it. Do what? What if I'm not able to get out of the long term care that I'm paying taxes for later if I decided to get something else? You don't need to worry about that until 60. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about it. The chances that this law is in place exactly this way and that you are still in Washington State, both are almost zero. Something will have changed. <laughs> I mean, we're talking 25 years. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I would pay the 400. Now, if you want to check and see if there's any cheaper way you can just go to an independent insurance broker, and you can check on one of our insurance ELPs, uh, probably the P&C guys, the guys that do car insurance and homeowners insurance on our website, some of our Ramsey Trusted guys and gals. They may be able to write you a policy if they're in Washington State. They will be able to access whoever is trying to do something for you people. That it, Basically, this is a tax. It's just mm -hmm. a tax. That's all it is. It's one more tax they put on you. And um, that's what it comes down to. Because, again, you're not getting anything for it, a huge benefit, and you don't even need the coverage. It's okay. like it's like they're going to tax you for not buying car insurance and you don't have a car. 
Okay, for everyone listening right now that is going, what are you talking about? Like I am right now. What is going on in in, in Washington? They're forcing people. They passed to get a law that says if you don't buy long term care insurance, nursing home insurance, that they're going to charge you a, a penalty at any age. Apparently. Okay. Okay. So so <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now you realize I'm not being I'm not being over melodramatic when I'm stating that they're communists. You're not. Okay. So for for clarity purposes for everyone else across the United States. At what age do people need to consider long-term care? 60. 60. Okay. Yeah, the chances of you using a policy are going into a nursing home yes. or needing in-home care permanently right. uh, before 60 are less than 3%. But at 60, you start to look at this. At 60, per, at 60 you need to get it okay. unless you – it is a great thing to buy long-term care insurance then because between 60 and 70, the chances of you using it go up exponentially, mm-hmm. Right. obviously. The older you get. Um, and uh, the, the normal thing that happens in your 60s or 70s is, say, a typical couple married, uh, 75% of the ladies outlive their husbands. Mm-hmm. And so dad goes into the nursing home. Uh, they have $300,000 saved. He uses it up on nursing home bills and dies. Mom's penniless. Mm. So you don't do that. You buy a long-term care insurance policy in your 60s, early 60s, so that it covers that 300 grand. So mom still has the 300 grand after his nursing home visit before he dies. Is there a window where it's too late to get long-term care insurance? Yeah, because it's based on your age and your health. Okay. And so, so there's a point you, at which they'll say you I don't, can't. I don't, you don't qualify. I, I, don't think you can get it at 80. Yeah. I don't think you can get it at 70, whatever. I don't know what the number is, but, and I know you can't get it if you have tremendous illness. Okay. If you've been diagnosed with, uh, uh, dementia. Yeah. You know, Alzheimer's. It's too late. Too late. Yeah. Your house already burned. You can't buy fire insurance. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's the problem. So, but that, and that's what scares everybody. So they want to run out and buy it early and all that kind of stuff. And we want to make sure that, uh, that, that the elderly are taken care of. And here's the super bad thing about Washington state. Okay. They're acting like that. These people aren't taken care of. There's a whole program called Medicaid, which is welfare, right? but Medicaid nursing home is paid for. It's for that. Right. For the, for the poor. And so if you don't have any money or have any insurance, welfare will pay for your nursing home. I don't recommend that as a plan. Right. But this idea that somehow we need to tax a 36-year-old in Washington state on her $70,000 income while she's trying to build her life to provide for this when the federal government already has the plan in place is just more socialism, communism, you know, and – um It's from the people right in the center of the state called Seattle. That's where it's coming from. The rest of them have brains, and it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's it's basically a – Well, that's helpful. I appreciate the explanation because I'm thinking even for my generation, so I'm 38. I don't need it, but it does help me think in terms of my parents, my in-laws. So so my generation that might be thinking, hey, is this something to look into or to talk to your parents about? Because you have to have the 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 long-term care talk and you need to get and because, you you know, the chances of spending some time in a nursing home are very high and it's usually not that long. Most people don't stand there two years or something max. And and so it's typically, you know, a three, four hundred thousand dollar max. Okay. Out of pocket situation, and so if you got ten million dollars, you can self insure through it. Yes. Okay. If you're a baby step millionaire now, right. and you look up fifteen years from now, and you got ten million dollars, uh, you can self insure through it. Mom will still be fine. Right. You know. You and, and besides that, you pay for in home care, uh, private care. Right. Uh, high quality. Right. 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 Personal butler. You yeah. know, <laughs> kind of thing. And you got ten million dollars. Shut up. So, but that, that's because you built a, that's one of the advantages of building wealth and being able to self-insure through some of these things but it's the you know the very poor medicaid's got welfare the very rich can do it for themselves and people that are on baby steps plans but the ones in the middle need long-term care insurance when they get to be 60. it's good
Christy Wright, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. Tomorrow, her new book launches, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance. Today's the last day you can get the pre-sale items, over $50 worth of stuff at RamseySolutions.com, and sign up for our live stream, Take Back Your Time. She and I are doing this coming Thursday night. It'll all be part of that package at RamseySolutions.com. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the debt-free stage, Josh and Jillian are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? You. We're doing hey. great. Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Well, welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off? About ninety thousand. All right. Awesome. How long did that take? Uh, six, six years, years and like two months. Very good. And your range of income during that time? Uh, just under thirty to between eighty and ninety. Good, nice bump. Okay. What do you guys do for a living? Um, I work with uh, computer uh, CAD programming for tooling dies and mm-hmm. she does cleaning all right yeah. very good actually runs her own business so ah. she's a, she was looking forward to meeting christy Wright. awesome all right so good very good so what kind of debt was this ninety thousand dollars our home you paid <gasps> off your house <laughs> looking at weirdos yeah yeah i love it very cool and you're young how old are you guys uh 38 and 36 awesome. all right not even 40 in a paid for house in grand rapids michigan what's the house worth about two seventy. Nice. And it's all yours. Yep. Yeah. How many of your friends haven't paid for a house? Not uh, many. I don't think any. <laughs> None. None. Just us. <laughs> we did it. I like it. Good for you guys. You're weird. Yeah. We're so That's weird. awesomeness. That is Very awesome. Fun. What started your story? How'd this whole thing get started for you? Well, I'd heard of Dave Ramsey when I was going through a college age group at our church, and we went through. I didn't even pay attention to what it was. <laughs> so it's something debt-free. Sounds very college yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It was It was good because I did make it through college debt-free and, you know, had the principles moving forward with the buying the home. But it really got kick-started when we bought our first home. And it was kind of the first big debt that we had. We were blessed not to have college debt. We had family that took care of that. So it was kind of shocking mm-hmm. to us to have this big kind of like Woo-hoo, debt. oh god and then yeah. a family yeah. on the way so we were like all right uh we're <laughs> under this debt let's get it done yeah and so. then we uh actually were on such a tight budget we had to get your book from the library <laughs> i like it so <laughs> we we rented it basically <laughs> went through the dave ramsey Rent program a dave yeah y'all yeah. are uncomfortable with debt from the get-go yeah. which is which is weird yeah. And, and awesome. Like, yeah. like the fact that you even saw it like that and thought we got to get rid of this yeah. initially. That's amazing. Yeah. And well, then was, we that, was that your family, your upbringing? What? Yeah. yeah. Both of our family were pretty much on that same, that instilled those principles in us about trying to not be in debt and, you know, getting a mortgage you can afford, not, you know, paying for our cars outright basically is what we were yeah. kind of raised with. And so it's like Grand Rapids community, man. I know it was grandma's <laughs> at, wisdom. At, at, at like Dutch, you say, all Dutch the time. reform movement, oh, yeah. man. It's a big deal. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've had a, I've had a heart connection to Grand Rapids for 30 years. It's amazing. It's strong there. It's in the water. <laughs> yeah. Very good. You guys way to go, man. Congratulations. Thank you. How does it feel to not have a payment in the world and you're not even 40? Oh my goodness. It's, it's a relief. It's hard to believe even. So uh, feels like we could do anything. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the secret? It, you guys have done something that n- very few people have done. What would you say is the secret to not just getting debt free, but paying off your house? Uh, for me, it was definitely don't let anything that gets you down or bumps that get in the way uh, make you think it's impossible. Okay. We had several bumps along the way. We have five pregnancies and adoption. We started a business. We actually moved houses and renovated one. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things. Cars die in the six years and everything was a setback, you know. Um, But we got back up and said, we're doing it for our kids. We're doing it for our future and we're doing it so we can be generous and, and outrageously generous in the future. So, and I think recognizing too, all those little bumps, we were able to pay in cash for them. So even though it felt like, oh, darn, that was one extra house payment that we're not able to do, he would always remind me like, yeah, but we're still winning. We're paying in cash for this. 
Yeah. So recognizing the little victories is important too. Yeah, you're not you're not going backward. No. You just slowed your forward. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's a good perspective. Yeah. Because uh, you can lose hope if you just if, if everything slows down too much. You can't. You don't feel like you're going to get there. You don't feel like you got traction. Mm -hmm. But uh, as long as you're moving in the right direction, even if it's a small step, and a, a few of the months are a little slow because something else comes up, you just keep going. Just keep pushing ahead. That's very strong. Yeah. Yeah. And it sometimes it felt like. The hits just kept coming, but again, we just tried to have that perspective of this is for our children. This is a legacy. It's something that's passed to us, and it's important to pass on. So, well, we, You make a good point that any of those setbacks became kind of inconveniences, but you had the cash to cover them. Mm -hmm. So many people that are you know, up to their eyeballs in debt, they're living paycheck to paycheck. When they get a setback, it becomes an, an emergency and mm -hmm. yeah. stressful and anxiety, and you guys were able to pay for them. That in itself is such a gift that you mm -hmm. guys worked hard because you set yourself up that way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we had to be really intentional about getting our income up, um, which is why it took us a bit because we started a small business and we did it with cash and we grew it slowly. But something that kind of surprised me was like, our house is paid off. Oh, we still have that income coming in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get to keep this money. Yeah, so yeah. much of it went towards paying the house that we we're kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, yeah this, is, this might work out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who thought? Yeah. Way to go, guys. I'm so proud of Thank you. Thank you. And how does it feel to be free? Just amazing. Yeah. It's just amazing. I, I feel so proud for my kids, yeah. actually. How many kids? Four of them. Four boys. Four, all right. Four boys all under seven. Whoa. <laughs> That's why we're here without them. <laughs> wow. I get it. You I earned get a it. vacation in so many ways. That's right. Okay. So outside of the two of you, who are your biggest cheerleaders, people cheering you on? Our biggest cheerleader is probably my sister. She's the one that I would call when I was feeling down but ironically she was real skeptical of Dave at the beginning <laughs> and she, we just she just watched us and I think she had some other exposure to Dave and she actually went through your fine she's a financial coach now so oh, wow all the way she really went from a skeptic over. she was like uh, I don't know what you guys are listening to but <laughs> that's not how the world works <laughs> she became our biggest cheerleader really I yeah that's quite cool funny. Yeah. that's fun so we brought her all the way into the fold yeah. oh yeah definitely <laughs> all right she she's joined the cult yeah <laughs> I love it. Way to go, guys. Way to go. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. What a wonderful thing you've done. you got to feel accomplished. Yeah. you got to feel powerful. Yeah. That feels great. Very cool. Not even 40 years old and a paid-for house worth almost $300,000. Very cool. we got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. That's what you've done. It's changed your legacy for those boys and all the generations after you. And the things you're going to be able to do with generosity are going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away, get somebody started on their journey. Uh, they've been inspired by watching you probably, and you maybe didn't even realize it. So that'll be there uh, in your hands for you to work with as well. So good job. Josh and Jillian, Grand Rapids, Michigan, $90,000 paid off. That's their house and everything. Took them six years and two months, making 30 up to 90. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt free! Yeah! Out there in the wild, folks, how many 40 year olds do you meet with a paid for $300,000 house making under 100000 None! <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Paid for house. I mean, we're seeing it again and again and again. It's just, it's mind blowing. But also it's really cool to hear these stories because the more common they are, the more people are going to hear this and go, oh, it's possible. And not only that, if they can do it, I can do it. It gives them that hope. Yeah. Hey, maybe you could do something different. I love how, uh, how he said, uh, that's not the way the world works. It's like, yeah, the world is broke. If you listen to that, you're going to stay broke. You can do it differently. And they did. Well, that's why we call them weird, yeah. because 78% um, of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. So just being in control is weird. Uh, getting out of debt and paying off your house by the time you're 40? Oh, you're just a freak. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. The best kind of freak. The, the best, best kind. The kind, of, the kind of freaks we love. Yeah. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
Chrissy Wright, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Her new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance, comes out tomorrow. The pre-sale specials are up today. If you want the deal, go to RamseySolutions.com. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. It means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Adam in Alabama. My wife and I have two sides to our business. One is catering and the other is full service restaurant. We started these businesses three years ago and they are debt free. With COVID still prevalent, we have taken a significant hit with low sales, supply chain issues, and staffing problems. My wife ties her identity and self-worth to the success of this business, but I would be glad to close it down. She wants to take a loan to keep us afloat and I'm not in agreement with this plan. Should I hold on and struggle and even go into debt? I know the answer is no, but how can I do it when my spouse is against me and afraid of the future? Well, there's a lot going on here. Um, mm-hmm. A lot. I mean, the the obvious is you and your spouse need to get on the same page regardless of what you do. And you know, Adam, that we're, we're never going to tell you to take out a loan. Um, but even if you don't take out a loan and even regardless of what path you take with a business, you still need to get on the same page with your spouse. You and your wife need to get on the same page of the vision, get to the root of what her fears are, what she's struggling with and so on. The other thing is just from a business standpoint, I can't help but uh, want to dig into that and go, okay, what's the real problem? Yeah, you may be having some struggles and yes, some of it is COVID, but is there a way to say, okay, we're going to maybe shut down the restaurant and go all in on catering? Or maybe we're going to downsize a little bit, scale back to where, because we have staffing issues, we're going to do just the pieces that we can do ourselves. Or, you know, I, I just, I like to problem solve, but sometimes when you're just sad or scared or overwhelmed, uh, it it feels bigger than it is. It feels more impossible than it is. I actually put that on Instagram today. You know, sometimes when you're overwhelmed, things just feel bigger, scarier, and more impossible than they actually are. So I wonder if some of these are not very fixable problems, Adam, that if you could fix these problems, the business could do better. The sales would improve. You don't have to take out a loan, obviously, which we're not going to tell you to do. And you and your spouse can get on the same page for the vision, um, you know, and obviously her identity doesn't need to be attached to it. But as a business owner, you know this, Dave, like you, you can't totally emotionally separate yourself from the success of the business because it is your baby. There's an aspect of it that's that's healthy and then you don't want it to be, well, my sole source of identity is here. We know that. So it's a lot. It's a lot that's going on, I feel like, in this question. Yeah, it's unhealthy to not tie some of your identity and some of your uh, self-worth to your business because you're pouring yourself into it. And to completely detach from that yeah. would make you a psychopath. Yeah, you care. I, and so you actually care about it, and it's it's my thing. It's, a, it's something I poured a lot into. So it would be unhealthy to do that. What I don't like hearing is she ties her identity and self-worth to the success of the business. So what you have to do is you have to back yourself up and say, okay, there are some things in this that I can control. Mm-hmm. For those things, I'm going to tie my mm-hmm. some of my self-worth and some of my identity to it. And I'm going to get my butt in gear, and I'm going to push some stuff around and make it happen because I care. Right. Uh, Then there's things you can't control. You can't make people come to work in the restaurant business right now when they're being paid to sit at home by the stupid federal government. Everywhere you go, high-end, low-end restaurants, and anything that is service industry is struggling with labor shortage. Because they're sitting at home until the federal government stops that. I mean, that's just, that's not something you'd caused. So I'm not going to, if I'm you, I'm not going to go, oh, I did something wrong. I feel bad about me. I can't get labor. And so we have to scale this back to the labor that I can get, Mm -hmm. which is me and thee. Right. (laughs) And, um, And whatever else, I mean. However many kids we had, you know, I mean, whatever, yeah. we're, we're all going to be in here working, but I can't make anybody else work. Yeah. Um, and I can't make a supply chain stuff be right. Right. I can't make, I mean, we're, we're fighting and scratching with these paper people. There's a paper shortage now. Get these books out. Your books are in. Coleman's books are in. We got books scheduled for January. I'm buying paper for them now. 
because I know that we got a supply chain problem. So, but I can't say, oh, there's a paper shortage, and so uh, I feel bad about me. No, I feel like there's a paper shortage. Right. <laughs> it's right. Like, I don't need to feel bad. Nothing had to do with uh, you. My yeah. identity's not tied to that. So the, 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 it gets real cliche, but sometimes pieces of something have to die for something to grow, or even the whole thing dies for something to grow back. Where there's this much manure, there's plenty of opportunity to grow. That's for sure. And uh, we've had the same thing around here, kiddo. I mean, we've been pivoting so much. I feel like I'm just chasing a dog, chasing its tail, uh, changing stuff and moving things around and how we deliver products and, you know, what a book tour used to look like to what it looks like today. There's not one now. We do it all virtual uh, because the people in New York have lost their ever loving minds in the media world. Uh, what it, you know, they, they want us to. Uh, like put our first born in a vault or something just to go see them. And it's just like, you people are nuts. Forget it. And so, no, you're not going to extract my DNA for me to come into your studio. You've lost your dadgum minds. So we have to, we have to adjust and pivot the whole thing. And so, um, uh, 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 I think that this is God whispering to your wife to get this business in its proper perspective within her psyche. Mm. Because it's going to kill her. If it succeeds and, and it owns her, it'll ride her into the grave. Yeah. If it fails and it owns her, it'll ride her into the grave. So she's got to get back on top of it and start owning it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. We're, we're, we're confirming that you should care deeply. We're confirming that it should hurt your feelings, that, you, that your business that you built is failing to do, due to nothing that you did wrong. I mean, you've got government interference, you've got economic interference, labor shortages, and supply chain shortages. You did nothing wrong. It hurts your feelings, and you grieve that, as Deloney would say. Yeah. And, and you know, all of that is, is normal. But I, I think this is the opportunity to not to take out a loan, but instead to decide who owns what. Does the business own her or does she own it? And if she owns it, she can close part of it. I own this. I don't want to close any of it. It's too dead gum hard to open. But I will close it, and then I'll still be here. I'll still be here, and I'll still be whole, and I'll, I'll be sad. Yeah. But um, but I, you know, if we shut down something that I love here, because it doesn't work anymore, yeah. I'll be sad. I've done it before. I've closed yeah. down the whole whole uh, business units here yeah. that that just didn't work, and I had invested millions of dollars and a lot of my emotion into, and it hurts. Yeah. But. I'm also still here yeah, because I own it. It doesn't own me. Yeah. And really, I think that's the core atom of what you all got to do. It's not about, do I go along with my spouse? The answer is no, you don't go along with your spouse because your f spouse is not functioning well here is what you're saying. Yeah. And I like how you made that distinction too of you're going to control what you can control. And we always say this, but control what you can control. What does that look like in light of the problems you're facing, what you can do, what you can fix, what is right for you given everything you're coming up against. And those things that you can't control, you can't. You let those go and you separate your identity and your self-worth from all these outside challenges that have nothing to do with you that you didn't do. And I just think that's a really helpful distinction. Yeah. I, I cannot control what the Biden administration does. They may close me down. Mm -hmm. They may put me out of business. I can't control it. I can't control what they do. The only thing I can control is what I can control. Yeah. And that's me. Yeah. And whether I, st whether, whether I stand, whether I stand on principle, whether I'm a, a, a person of integrity, uh, and whether I've done the best I can do with what was in front of me, and then sometimes it still doesn't work. Yeah. Yep. And out of that is always born, out of those ashes, is a, a phoenix always rises up. Yeah. Out, and it's very cliche, but there's a reason for those cliches is it happens. It happens all the time. The death of a relationship is the birth of something new. The death of, uh, of a business is the birth of a new idea out of those ashes. It happens all the time if you own it instead of it owning you. This is The Ramsey Show. here we just launched a brand new listener survey we want to know what you think about the show you'll be entered to win a 100 dollars amazon gift card no purchase necessary take the survey at ramseysolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789 
is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where dad is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Christy Wright, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. This is launch week for her new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance. It's only $20, and today is the last day. Tomorrow's launch day. Today's the last day. If you buy it, you get the audio book free, the e-book free, and access to our live event that is this coming Thursday night for free. All of this is almost an extra $100 worth of value. Highly suggest you do all of that. If you want to learn something about life balance, Christy and I are going to help you do that, especially Christy with this new book. It is uh, it's a beautiful book. It is a wonderful thesis. It's the life-changing, transformational kinds of material here. And uh, we are excited that it is coming out uh, on the Ramsey brand, uh, the Ramsey Press label. And uh, it... it it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. Yeah, it's been fun to see the reviews come in. And uh, it's one of those things that, and you talk about this all the time, Dave, we, um, you know, you intersect with the podcast. We see people all the time on the debt-free stage. They listen to the podcast, change their life. You read a book, one maybe one takeaway or one concept, one principle, one step changes how you live your life, which has a direct ripple effect forever. So that's, that's the heart behind this is to help people take their time back truly, literally. And, uh, and so they can spend their life on what's most important to them. Take back your time at RamseySolutions.com. You can get it there at 20 bucks. If you order it today, we will ship it today, and you can download the ebook, the audio book, and everything uh, within 24 hours, and you'll be able to watch us on the live stream on Thursday night. We've got about 21 seats left here in the studio. If you want to join us in the Ramsey Solutions headquarters, we're going to have a small, about 200, 250 person studio audience uh, for the event on Thursday night, and we can get a few of you in if you want to. Uh, just put, again, RamseySolutions.com slash time. Aaron is with us. Aaron is in Evansville, Indiana. Hi, Aaron. How are you? I'm talking to Dave and Christy, so I'm fantastic. (laughs) What's up, kiddo? (laughs) Hey, I have a business budgeting question for you guys today. Um, I launched my business on July 15th of this year. How many months should it take to have a set budget after going through the baby steps in my own personal life, this unknown business budget at about two months in feels very uncomfortable to me. Okay. What's your business? Uh, I am a crop insurance agent, and I opened up my own agency. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Well, because you've experienced this on the personal side, then you know it can take a few months to start to see the rhythms and that type of thing. The only thing is on, on the personal side, you have a track record of your bank statements to look at and go, hey, we spend about this much on groceries or we spend this about this much on electricity, that type of thing. Because this business is so new, Aaron, a lot of that's unknown. So mm-hmm. you're going to set a budget and these are projections that are going to incrementally get more accurate month over month however it's still a projection really with i mean really within your first year now you're going to have a more accurate idea in in three months or four months than you did on your first month it's going to get hopefully more accurate but it is going to take a little bit more time because this business is so new you're going to see what what seasonality looks like in your business and you're going to start to see the trends obviously that will reflect marketing or what's going on in the world uh what what the trends are in your industry that type of thing so just know that similar to the personal side of budgeting it can take some time in fact it can take more time because it's so new because you don't have these bank statements to refer to like you do on the personal side so it's a projection though it's a goal you're still budgeting every step of the way just know that it it might take a little bit more time to get more accurate dave how do do you have a rule of thumb that you advise people when you're talking about budgeting and and it's a new business especially in that first year 
I, I, I think you're right. I think it's incremental. The, the longer you've been in business, the more accurate your budget's going to be. Uh, we launch a new product here. Uh, we don't know what it's going to do, but we've got your planner coming out this year, and it's what, the sixth year or fourth year or what is it? Fourth or fifth. Fourth yep. or fifth year of putting out the Christie Wright Planner, uh, which is a calendar that mm-hmm. sells for $49. It's out right now, as a matter of fact. And so we can predict the sales on that based on those the trend lines. Right. Every year's gotten better. We've sold more every year, right. uh, substantially more every year. But we can trend line that out. And so we've got something. But the first year? It was a guess. It was a guess. It was a total guess. It's not even a budget. It's just a guess. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what you're doing right now. You're guessing. It's hopefully an educated guess. And actually, our our first year of budgeting on that planner was not that far off. We hit it pretty close, but it was a guess. And, you know, you could do a whole lot more or a whole lot less than you thought you were going to do. And then you make adjustments from there. And then you say, okay, what, are the, what is, as she said, the seasonality to this as you go along. But what I do want you to do to know is two things. One is you should be upset the less accurate it is the longer you've been doing it. If you've been doing this 10 years and your budget's still like an unknown and you're freaked out about it, you're not this you, something's wrong okay but if you've been doing it 10 months you're just now kind of getting in the saddle but every month you should be uh, getting a little bit more accurate a little better and then certainly after you've gone through a few years of it and you say oh well fall is always a big time spring is not whatever it is i don't i, I suspect the crop insurance thing might be tied to that you know yeah be tied something to seasonality i, I suspect you're going to have some Sometimes that are big and sometimes that aren't. But you're going to see that and you're going to build that into your business model. John is with us in Minneapolis. Hey, John, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Chris. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. So I have a question uh, regarding a free will gift and where that might work in the baby steps. So for my wife and I are seeing right now, we were gifted um, a chunk of money from my parents for a down payment on our home. Uh, my parents are extremely generous with their time and their money, and we don't want to appear ungrateful. Quite the contrary, we want to reward them for their generosity. And in our short baby step journey, we've experienced what it's like to be debt-free. And although this gift is not strictly a debt, we do feel like it's something that separates us from being financially free. So, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What? What? I thought it was a gift. Why did you declare it a loan? What right do you have to declare it a loan? Well, it's something that from time to time has been has been brought up in conversation. And I don't think it's been brought up after the fact with any malice from my parents, but it is something that is still talked about. In what way? So they hold it over your head? No, 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 no. They don't hold it over our head at all. No. So what? They brought it up and said one time we gave you forty grand so you owe us? I mean I don't understand. Was it a Um, gift or not? It was a gift, yes. I think your wife needs to let this go. It's a gift. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. If you guys want some help in different areas of your life, get your pencil ready. Here's what we're doing. This Thursday night, 
We have a live stream from Ramsey Solutions headquarters. Christy Wright and I on her new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance. I will open up the live stream and Christy will do the majority of the teaching. Obviously, it's her material and her new book that comes out tomorrow this coming saturday and if you want to be in the live studio audience we have about 20 or 18 or 14 or whatever it is right now tickets left they're free and you can come and are they free to come in the audience if you use the promo code time and you get your book signed when you're here so come join us yeah there's a few tickets left if you want to come and be part of the studio audience thursday night at day at ramseysolutions.com slash time then on saturday we are doing a Financial Peace Accelerated event here. Uh, and Rachel, George Camel, John Deloney, and I are teaching the entire Financial Peace University in one day. All nine lessons, long day for the audience and for the speakers. And uh, we're going to get the whole thing in, and it is here in our lobby. And I think there's about five tickets left to that and i think there's a charge for that so ramseysolutions.com and you get the whole financial peace university ramsey solution ramsey plus thing is all every dollar is all tied into that it's all one package and you can come and be in the because we're doing a video shoot to reshoot some of the lessons and uh is what we're doing and so but again i think we've got about three or four hundred tickets for that it might be sold out but it's right at it somewhere right around there check ramseysolutions.com for that then on september the 28th, Christy and George Camel and I will be doing an event to help you set your life and your money up to go win called Game Plan. We want to put you in place for your game plan. This is a completely free live stream. Again, there is a few tickets for the live studio audience, same exact venue. Uh, and so we'll limit that to 300 or so tickets max, something like that. And because uh, we've got camera crews and everything else in there to shoot the live stream with. And game plan is all about helping you get a game plan. Breathing room in your time, breathing room in your money, what it takes to have a game plan, what it takes for you to win. Winning is an intentional act, and it requires a a game plan. If you're going to win the Super Bowl, you need a game plan. If you're going to win at your career, you need a game plan. If you're going to win at your life and your money, you need a game plan. That is September the 28th. It is a free live stream, and uh, you can text game plan to 33789, all one word, and uh, you don't have to live a life that's normal. We'll show you how to have a game plan. And it's, again, that's a free live stream, September the 28th. Christy Wright, George Camel, and me text one word, game plan, to 33789. So three live streams in the next week or two. A lot of stuff going on around here. A lot of cameras and camera crews and stuff moving around. Uh, it's turned, turned this place into a dead gum production facility. <laughs> but, uh, hey, let's do it, man. Whatever it takes to win. Let's go. Christian is with us in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Hi, Christian. How are you? Good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I recently, um, I'm in the military and the Navy, and um, I'm basically trying to have a date on when I'll project it to rotate out of the military into the civilian world. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know what would be a good number to have in my savings account God forbid I couldn't find a job after being so used to such a, I've never transitioned from an actual career to another one. Yeah. So how, how old are you? I don't necessarily know. 24. When will you transition out? Uh, potentially in 2026. Okay. Well, we got some time to plan. And that's what I was thinking too. Um, I, I've never, so I, my idea was I would like, Probably, I don't know, eighty-five thousand or a hundred thousand in my savings. But I mean, that just seems like such an unrealistic number, <laughs> having never had more than twenty thousand in my savings before. Yeah. What do you uh, make? Uh, right now, probably about forty-eight thousand. Good for you. Well, thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it depends, Christy, on every, everything on what he lands in. Yeah. And how quickly he lands. Well, and that, and I just, and would- I think you plan that. Yeah, like I, I think you'll be fine. Obviously, if you have eighty thousand, Christian, but I don't think you have to have eighty thousand to be able to make that transition. 
I think you could make it on less. I think there's probably, you know, in your mind that, that that's a number that gives you peace of mind, which is fine. And I think you can you can save between now and then, but you got some time. And I think you'd be just fine on less, especially if you spend the next three years not just saving money, but thinking about what you want to do. Working on those contacts like uh, Ken Coleman talks about. We can we can give you a copy of Ken Coleman's new book, Christian, where he talks about getting clear on what you want to do and getting connected with the people that are doing it. And what's cool is you're thinking so far in advance, you can start making some of those connections and even getting clear on it between now and then, where by the time that you're out, you're not starting from scratch then, which is going to give you a huge head start where you won't even need that much of a savings, if any, to be able to transition to that job. Yeah, the other variable in this equation is your new job and how quick it lands. Okay? So let's let's play pretend. Let's you make forty eight, you said, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's pretend that your new job makes a hundred and forty eight and it starts the day after you rotate out of the military. How much money do you need in savings? None. Right? You're right. I mean, it'd be nice to have some, but in order to survive, you just got a $100,000 a year raise. I think you can struggle through it, you know? So it has to do with what, how quickly you have landed something. And so you land that, you, you plan that soft landing and you start working it hard a year out. And you start landing into that career and figuring out what you've got to do to tool up to get, to, to get that deal. And, you know, it's probably going to be a raise. And you're probably if you if you set it up right, you're going to join the next week after you leave the military, and you don't you don't need any savings. Now the other end of the coin is it takes you ten years to get employed. Well, you would have needed a million dollars then, right? Which is absurd. Yeah, it is. So you're not going to take that long. So the way to lower this need or to scratch this itch is not the size of the savings account. It is the surety of the landing pad. And the place okay. you're going to be. And that's what I would work on. So I'd start reading everything Ken Coleman writes. Hold on. I'll have Kelly sign, send you a copy of his first book, The Proximity Principle. And then you can go buy from paycheck to purpose. It comes out in November. It's on pre-sale right now. Um, and go to the Ken Coleman website, KenColeman.com. Start listening to his show on career. And, you know, you got plenty of time to figure out your purpose and plug into it and have a good soft landing. And the, the more sure that is, and the better that is, the less money and savings you'll need. That's the part of the formula that, that was missing. All right, up next going to be Art in Phoenix. Hey, Art, how are you? Art there? Hey, Art. Art's gone. No, Art didn't Art. make it. All okay, right. well, let's... <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Art. Try something else here. What did I do? Maybe I, I, maybe I messed Art up. I don't think I did. Lindsay is in <laughs> Charleston. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you? Good. What's up? Well, I'm going to give you a quick background, and then um, thank you in advance for helping me with this. I am 58 years old. My husband's 69. We didn't follow any principles because we were never taught to until just a few years ago. Um, when we found you and where we are today, we have um, absolutely no debt except a mortgage that has $180,000. We have six months savings. We have about 600000 in our retirement. Way to go. And thank you. Um, thanks to you. Um, and w my question is, we have a beautiful 130-year-old house that we've completely renovated over the last 20 years out in the country. Um, we did put it on the market because uh, we thought that it's the best time to sell while the market's good. And the only reason we're going to do that is because my husband's getting older and feels like he's not going to be able to keep up this 15 acres without help mm -hmm. um, at some point and to secure our retirement. All right. I'll tell you what. You hang on. We come back from this break. I'll give you a quick answer to that. I don't want to rush it with 10 seconds left. This is The Ramsey Show.
Christy Wright, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Lindsay is in Charleston, South Carolina. They've got a home that is a beautiful old home on 15 acres outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Her husband's 69, she's 58. Uh, they're debt-free except for that. They've done a really, really good job. But the maintenance of the... Uh, beautiful old home is wearing thin on him along with the 15 acres and they're talking about selling it is that a fair summary of what you told me so far Lindsay did I push the button let me try Lindsay there you are hey is that a fair summary of what I said of what you told me so far yes I think so okay so what's your question um, my question is to secure our retirement. Is that going to be the right thing to do? We made every mistake that you've ever mentioned um, it, it, starting the baby steps. So we did not know about you or did not even make any plans until about five years ago. My income went up tremendously. Um, so we really just started planning and paying off everything in retirement five years ago. But my concern is we won't be ready when I'm ready to retire. Um, my husband retired a little early, and um, we know an old house, as nice as it is, is going to continue to need um, constant maintenance of some kind. So we're so wondering. Let me, let, me, we... let me see if I can read your mail, okay? Sure. The dream that this house represented has died, and it's hard to let it go. Absolutely. It was cute and fun and had some acreage and has a lot of character, and it's a historic cool baby. But the reality is it's a pain in the butt. Well, it's only a pain when... <laughs> when it's a pain. Yeah. So I just sold my I just sold my home, and I'm going through the exact same emotions. I built this big, beautiful home up on the side of a hill. I lived there 12, 14 years, and I had an absolute blast in the home. It is an amazing property, but it got to where just keeping the freaking light bulbs changed was too much trouble. And so we just decided a new adventure was at hand. We sold it, and now I'm kind of grieving moving off the side of that beautiful mountain. Uh, but I'm also needing to move because it's the next season in my life. The season has changed, and I have to grieve the dream that is gone and uh, enjoy the memories of the past that was there and move on to the next chapter, which is wisdom. And uh, it's part of my adventure, and it's it, it's a wonderful adventure. And so you might enjoy having some new appliances in a new house after living in there, um, because they don't build them like they used to. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, true and, of and, houses and cars. And it, it, think about what that makes possible, Lindsay. Like when you grieve this and move on from this, what does that make possible? Because you're willing to change with your season. So I love how you're talking about that earlier, Dave. Of something dying means that something new can grow, and that's exciting too. Steve and Melanie are on the debt-free stage right here in the lobby where you guys live. We're Huntington Beach, California. Oh, I was just there. I was in Anaheim. Okay. Yeah. I just, just spoke at a church over there this weekend. It was wonderful. So, uh, hey, guys, so how much debt have you paid off? We paid off $1,078,000. Wow! <laughs> What? Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> what? that has not happened yet today. <laughs> I need this story. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> How long did this take? It took us four years and two months. Oh, my gosh. What's your household income range during that time? We went from 180 to just under 250. Cool. What do you all do for a living? I'm a registered nurse mm -hmm. in the emergency department. Oh, yeah. And I'm a construction project manager for a commercial real estate company. And both rather busy right now. Oh, wow, my goodness uh -huh. gracious. Wow. Okay, so what kind of debt was this? We had seven mortgages, so we we're just slightly leveraged. And that included five out-of-state rental properties. We had a, uh, a home up in the Eastern Sierras. Melanie had lived in Mammoth Lakes for about 27 years, and so we had her home up there and then when we got married seven years ago then we had the the home down in Huntington Beach that that I had been in wow so what'd you do start amputating <laughs> a amputating <laughs> properties yeah. yeah so we had the uh, we had the, the seven mortgages and then we also had uh, school loans that for Melanie's nursing school credit card and then uh, furniture on a zero percent interest oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> 
So <laughs> that was our gift to ourselves for our two-year anniversary. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we don't have enough debt. Let's get some more. That's right. <laughs> so we what, did all the things. How, did you sell a bunch of the properties? Is that what you're saying? We yeah. we actually did. So we we went through uh, financial peace through our church in 2017. And we started working the steps, but with the amount of debt, we, we started hitting the, the school loan debt and in uh, the credit card and, and furniture loan. So we, we kind of hit that hard, but hadn't really looked at selling the properties just yet. And what really kind of triggered that was I started listening to the podcast in 2019 and it got me really fired up based on uh, what, hearing you talk about the, uh, when, when things are all going smooth, everything's great mm -hmm. but if you have a little bit of a, a hiccup there then everything can can, can turn and you not looking at the risk so I think that was a big one for me and so we, we just started looking at it and, and decided you know let's unload the properties the the five out-of-state properties and uh, when we started really kind of shifting we just really felt God kind of led us with that because everything just went really quickly and wow. super smooth. We, we basically sold those properties immediately. And then COVID hit. So yeah. had we owned all those rent dependent properties during COVID, you'd have been screwed. We'd have been homeless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I got laid off after almost 15 years. Um, yeah. So that happened. To, right. In the midst of COVID, due to COVID, I was laid off. So if we'd had seven yeah. mortgages, we yeah. it could have been catastrophic for us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we put everything back on our primary residence and then we just started hitting that hard. And that's when I got on board because I could, we were so deep that I couldn't, I couldn't even see a bit of light anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, so I couldn't get on board. I just wasn't a fan of, of I mean, no offense, but this yeah. whole thing. <laughs> I'm this not offended. Thing, <laughs> it's a million dollars. I'm not offended. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing was too much. I was like, there's just no way. There's just no way. I had 60000 just real quick, 60000 in student loans that I'd been paying on for four or five years that were more than when I started. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. That's the blessing of student loans. That's the blessing. Yeah. It yeah. just keeps on giving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so with the podcast, something that was um, really good information, as you had mentioned, not trying to like, I got fired up and said, okay, we, we've got to do this. But I go, I get, I've got to tread lightly because if I want to get Melanie on board, you know, I need to bring her on board willingly. I'm not going to be able to force this. And so we, uh, you know, really coming up, having a, having a why, getting intentional and, um, and just making that decision that, you know, we want to make a, a real, um, you know, take a bite out of this, this debt. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, you guys are incredible. So, so you had this turnaround. What, what kept you motivated? How did you stay with it for this long haul to get through all that? You said you couldn't see any light. When did you start to see some light? After we sold all of our properties and put it down on our primary residence, and I think we were down to like 160. Okay. Then yeah, I from was, a million, that's like, and, wow. It's, yeah. it's huge. <laughs> and he, he um, had lost his job and got a big severance. And, and, and so then we were, I'm thinking, oh, if we put that on, if you get another job, if this, if that, and everything just kind of lined up. He got another job. God just laid the way, and we just kind of took the steps, and it just, it just blew up the whole thing. And then COVID. Yeah. So then I, I, you know, obviously I could work as much as I want. Right. So I took two full-time jobs, worked six 12-hour shifts a week Jeez. for 10 months, and... Uh, Six twelves. For t yeah, and You're a beast, um, girl. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the because we is, had the why. Yeah. But as soon as the why, like I was trying you can to see it now. Yeah, yeah. now yeah. now there was light. Don't get in I my could way. see the <laughs> end of the tunnel. And so once I was on board, it there was just no. It was like steamroll. It was it was a little bit like yeah. wildfire with wind. Once once she was on board, it's like. I'll work, you know, <laughs> as you much guys, as possible. <laughs> so. You guys are amazing. I'm yeah. so proud of you. What the beautiful part of this story is just the, the Holy Spirit whispering to you at just exactly the right time, like three years before you had to. Yeah. And, and you would have been, you'd have been messed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he just completely saved you. You listening saved you, but he saved you. That's amazing. I'm so proud of y'all. Yeah. Very well done. All right. It is Steve and Melanie from Los Angeles. A million seventy eight thousand paid off in four years and two months. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three. Three. Two. two one. one. We're debt free. I love it!
Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. Henry Ford said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said, faster horses. <laughs> it's the theme of the horses. There we go. Still there. All right. Joanna is with us. Joanna is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Joanna. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, I, <laughs> I graduated college last year, and my student loan payments begin in March of next year. Um, I'm responsible for paying back my student loan debt as well as the Parent PLUS loan that I took out under my mother's name, which is about a total of $72,000. My brother suggested that I look into the resources that you offer, and I'm basically just trying to figure out how to go about paying both loans at the same time while keeping up with my financial responsibilities and getting paid a salary of $32,000 a year. Well, that last number makes it tough, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. So what do you do? Um, I work as an appeals clerk for a federal government agency. I get paid about 70 t- 17 um, an hour. I have good benefits, 401k mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what's your degree in? I graduated with a degree in communication arts and digital filmmaking. Okay, so you're not working in your field? No. Okay. What's your plan? Well, right now I'm looking into possibly finding a a job that pays more Mm -hmm. because I'm living paycheck to paycheck. You know, this is my first year I'm living alone, Mm -hmm. and I have to already start thinking about, like, a plan of paying back the the loans Mm -hmm. while keeping up with all my other payments. Yeah. Okay. All right. And how much of the 70000 is in your name and how much of it's in your mom's name? Um, under my name is about 29000 and under my mom's name is 38000 um, interest of 5000 mm-hmm. Um But she just got a mortgage um, mm-hmm. about two years ago, so I'm pretty much responsible for paying back what's under her name. Mm-hmm. And that, that was, was your deal, deal all along, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So you invested seventy, eighty thousand dollars into a degree, and um, you're going to need to benefit from that degree by using it to get a better job than you have now, so that you can pay off this debt. Does that make sense? Yes. So I want you really to work on the career side of this equation. I'm glad you've got what you've got, but there are no benefits in the world good enough to make what you have to be called a good job. Right. You just got a job. It's not a good job. Yeah. It's not a good job. Okay. A good job in your world is you're going to make 60 to 80. Okay. And you can do that. Okay. It might not be instantaneously, but I don't want you five years from now sitting in that same place you're sitting in now because it's where you happened to land the first month you got out of college and you never did anything about it. Right. Does that make sense? Because you, as you have found, the 32 is tough to live on, much less reduce $70,000 worth of debt, much less to even pay the payments on it. So you're looking at extra jobs right now just to break even, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm telling you has to make sense. You've got to work on the career side, and I'll help you with that. We're gonna, we have a Ramsey personality named Ken Coleman that helps people find their best way to move into a career. And uh, we have a career assessment that we charge $30 for. I'm going to give it to you free. We have a book that he wrote called The Proximity Principle, which is going to be a big deal for you. And I'm going to give it to you for free. And I want you to do both of those things this week. I want you to finish the book and finish the assessment both this week. Okay. And then I want you on KenColeman.com and downloading his resume templates and start listening to his podcast because what you have more than a student loan crisis would be an income crisis. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Because obviously if we can double your income, you can get out of this pretty quick. Yeah, okay. Joanne, Joanne, if I'm you, I'm I'm right now looking at this as if I'm taking on two part-time jobs. One part-time job literally anything to get some some extra income coming in right now immediately like this weekend 
And the second part-time job is looking for a career change. I'm looking at it that way. You're going to get immediate income and a part-time job okay. to give you some breathing room. And then in addition to that, you are going all in on exactly those resources Dave just talked about, searching, making connections, doing everything you can to get a better full-time job that's going to make you more money. Uh, and it may take a little bit longer to do that, and that's fine because you're going to have a little bit of margin from this other part-time and job. I, and I don't want you worrying about benefits. Yeah. You're okay. broke. I want you worried yeah. about money. So the next time someone asks you about your career and what you're getting paid, I want you to say, I make money. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Because if you make $60,000 a year and there aren't any benefits, I think you'll be okay. Now, yeah. and there will be some benefits probably unless you're doing contract stuff. But, I mean, you know, if we can get you to 60, 70, 80, get you on a track in the communications world, in the film world, whatever it is you've been studying, whatever your dream was that caused you to go get that degree, then you can move in the right direction. So very cool. Kelly, I'll pick up and get you signed up for everything. You call us or Ken back anytime, and we'll be honored to walk with you and help you do all this. It's an income issue for you, kiddo. All right, Justin is in Mason City, Iowa. Hi, Justin. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, I have a question. I have, um, I'm debt-free. My wife and I are debt-free. Um, finally paid off my student loans after listening to your show and not waiting for the government bailout. So I did that. But my question is, um, we have a mortgage still, uh, and we owe 152000 on our mortgage. And we have some mutual funds that we could take um, money out of the mutual funds, but we're worried about the tax bill on the mutual funds counting it towards income. Mm -hmm. Well, how long have you so, had the mutual fund? Um, in December, it will be considered long-term gain. Mm -hmm. And so that would but, be that um, would only be a fifteen percent tax, right? Right, right, right. And That's so, what and and how much would, how much of the money? How much is in the mutual fund? We have about four hundred thousand. Okay, and so if you pull two hundred out, how much is the gain mm -hmm. on the two hundred? How much is the has it gained? Um, that I'm I'm not sure. Well, it's only been a year. It couldn't have been much. Right. Right, and the tax yeah, is only on the gain. Okay, and so if if your if your two hundred thousand went up twenty thousand bucks, your taxes are three grand. Okay, so it's nothing. Yeah, no, that's nothing. That's not right. Yeah, I did so that wrong. Were... I did that wrong. It's, no, if it went up, if it went up twenty thousand bucks, it's three grand. No, I did do that right. Twenty thousand, not two hundred thousand. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so 15% of your gain is all you're paying taxes on. That's the whole thing. Okay. And so, yeah, okay. you're going to use that and pay off this house. That's awesome, man. But I might wait till December and hit the long-term capital gains and cut your tax bill in half. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, if you wait but from September January, to December and it costs you three grand instead of six grand, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, all right. Okay. That's, that's what we were thinking, um, and we just didn't know – uh, you know, what the taxes were going to really be on it. I knew yeah. it was 15%, but I didn't know how to figure out that. Yeah, it's only on how much it went up. And if it's only a year old, it couldn't, it shouldn't have gone up that much. Does that make sense? Well, well, some of it is a year old. Some of it is older. Some of it's, um, then you don't, on the part older. that's older, you don't have to wait. Okay. And, but you may have a little more capital gain on that part. And so right. you can talk with your broker and figure out which is the most tax efficient portion to cash out to pay off your mortgage. And then I would get after it and do that. Thank you for calling. Just take back your time. This is the last day to get all the deals, all the add-ons before the book hits the uh, streets tomorrow. Check it out. Chrissy Wright's brand new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to a Balanced Life. Be sure and check it out. Christy, good hour. Thanks for having me. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Dave here. We just launched a brand new listener survey. We want to know what you think about the show. You'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. No purchase necessary. Take the survey at RamseySolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789.